Hello, my name is Kylan Larson. I am the producer, game designer, and part programmer at Annoying Cat Entertainment. I'll be going over our hack and plan board and how we're using it for our game development process on the game Cardboard Coliseum. This is more or less showing any new members to the team or random people out there on the internet, hello, that uh, you can use hack and plan for some awesome workflows and essentially make your team more productive than using a, something like Trello. So first of all, I am currently doing a task. I'm making a YouTube video. So I'm going to go into the project management tab, which is a custom category of uh, the system, essentially. We, it comes with programming and art and writing and sound and a bunch of pre-made categories for you because it's made for game development. But you can add your own too. So I added project management. I broke up art and do 2D art and 3D art. I gave some unique uh, icons and colors. And then I set up a board called Kickstarter Demo, where we're putting all of our tasks for our Kickstarter, which we're going to try and get to at some point. And I have a task called, nope, that's not right, Create Hack and Plan User Tutorial. So I'm going to start tracking time for this task, and you'll see that there's now a timer in the bottom. And so it's logging the hours that I'm working on this YouTube video. Later on, I'll need to log work manually and say, hey, I actually put in way more time, you know, doing edits and revising and all that sort of thing. But for right now, I'm just going to track time. It's a good system. We're going to move this task into in progress. So here to show that it's currently being worked on. Once I'm done recording, I'll move it to testing so that I can edit it and maybe have somebody else check it out and then move it to complete once that's done, finalize the hours, and that task is done. Now, if I wanted to create a new task, what I have set up for this board is that anyone can make a task as long as they have a part in it. So, For example, a 3D artist can make 3D art tasks. A writer can make writing tasks. Admins can make tasks for anything. And of course, as the owner, I can also make tasks for anything. Um, regular users can make tasks for ideas or for bugs. So let's say we have an idea and we want to make a task. We're just going to go create task. We're going to say, cool new idea, bro. <laughs> and we're going to say, well, it doesn't necessarily have a design element. Well, maybe it's an enemy. Let's say this new idea is an enemy. So we've already got design elements, which I'll get into in a little bit. And we can say it's an enemy. And it, yep, part of the Kickstarter demo board, idea, importance, and normal probably. You could say it's of high or low importance, depending on the situation, but it's just an idea. So probably normal importance or even low. Estimated cost, zero hours. Um, ideas aren't going to cost us time. And then description, you know, you could write out your idea here and then assign yourself to it as the user because it's your idea. You don't need any subtasks because, uh, you know, it's an idea again. But if you were working on a 3D model, your subtasks might look like, you know, the model, the weapon for the model, if it's an enemy, uh, texturing it, that sort of thing. And then dependencies. And dependencies might be, you know, okay, I want to do animations, so I need to have the model first. So your dependency of an animation task is the model, which I actually have a template board called new enemy template, which is set up with some tasks you can check out. So a new enemy design, a design task, might take an hour to design a new enemy, might take two or three, who knows? That can be changed later. Um, concept art for that enemy. Then enemy AI, you'll notice that this already has a lock. This depends on enemy design, right? We can't make AI unless we have a design for the enemy. And then 3D model also depends on concept art. We need art in order to make a model. We need animation, or animations is blocked by the model. So it depends on 3D model, depended by implementing enemy assets. We can't implement the 3D model, the AI, the animations all together, the sound effects. We can't implement that stuff until we have these tasks done. 
So everything is dependent on each other. The, the block tasks are very clearly not things to be worked on right now. And it's just a super, super helpful system. Now let's say I want to go work on a programming task and I don't know where to start. There's too many. Well, first thing I can do is I can sort by importance and see what needs to be worked on, what's critical. Right now, this is the highest priority task, so I might try and work on that. You can see it's blocked by the third person camera design system. So you might want to say, well, I'll, okay, I'll design the system and then we can program it. Um, or maybe you want to just start working on some other task. If, the, if nothing else is high priority, maybe you can look at what's not blocked. You could also decide to sort by, you know, design element. I want to work on something enemy related. So put all the enemy tasks together and work on this one. Or maybe you want to just sort by stuff you're already assigned to. You can go by category, sort by user, and check out all of the tasks that you are currently assigned to on the board. Super, super useful stuff. Now, I've talked about this design model a couple of times, so you can see that this crowd engagement system has a design system called crowd engagement manager. If I go into the design model, you can see this is more or less like a breakdown of our game design and all the systems in the game. So our world is craftium, our stages, which are coliseums. Um, we have two right now, well, just one that we're working on, the hot glue volcano. Coliseum 2 is a more placeholder, and then I could clone this and make more later. You just go clone, and you add more stuff, or I could add new child tasks, new things within it, like levels. And then you can add descriptions and tasks and all that to these, which is awesome. Another thing is you can, once tasks are assigned to these, you can see the progress. So we've got tasks assigned to our protagonist and that's being worked on. I'm gonna open up enemies, go to our toothpick archer enemy, and you can see all of the tasks currently that are assigned to the toothpick archer. You can also see the estimated time, the logged hours, how many hours are open and close, meaning you know if they've been completed or if they need to be worked on still and the percent completion overall of the task. Really, really useful metrics and everything. Um, and there's also a metrics tab, if you're so savvy, and you want to check out, you know, what are the current hours assigned in my project? How many hours have people logged? How many hours are open and closed? How close are we to being done with the project? And you can also see a further breakdown by category. So you could very clearly see, oh, you know, those 2D artists are slacking. They need to pick up their game or something like that because, you know, their percentage of progress is much lower. In this case, it's the opposite. But you can see all of that in your metric system, and it's just a really, really handy tab. If you set dates for everything on your tasks, then you can also see in calendar that breakdown. Currently, we do not have dates set on our tasks because everyone's kind of working freelance on their own time when they have time, so we don't have hard dates set. But if you did have hard, da hard dates set, there's a calendar tab. Um, you might need the pro version for that, but there's a one month trial, which I'm currently using, and I expect to be paying for it soon because it's really, really nice, this whole system. I think I've covered pretty much everything I need to. Um, this backlog I didn't cover. Uh, this is more so just for tasks that aren't in a board. This is if you are using a sprint based system. So your boards were sprint one and sprint two and sprint three. If you had tasks that weren't assigned a sprint yet, they might just go straight in the backlog and then these would get assigned to a board at a later date. Currently we're not using it, but you could if you wanted to. Um, if I wanted to create a task or user story, I just go here. I think I already showed this off, but I'm just going on and on about how great a system it is because it really is an awesome thing. Um, I highly recommend Hack and Plan, and I hope this video helped you better your skills and make you a better game designer with it. Thank you for watching, and hopefully, we'll catch you in another video.